Hello everyone. In today's session, I wanted to focus on um, a few design options that you have. Uh, we'll be starting at the branch uh, and discussing how um, you can enforce different um, redundancy options and um, the pros and cons of each. Um, and to start with, I wanted to focus on the internet only branch. In my view, it's easier to design because there is no NPLS connectivity, there is no underlay and underlay to overlay redistribution, etc. I will be getting into more details on how that might be problematic if you don't design it carefully. So let's just focus on how we connect a branch with VeloCloud edges if only public transport is considered. Now, the easiest way to design everything is just to have the one edge uh, and that will connect to one or multiple circuits. Also, what's important is uh, what's downstream because in certain cases you might have uh, something like a layer two switch and in some cases you might have a layer three or a router. Now, in the case of the layer two switch, uh, the edge here uh, does, um, become the default gateway and also will run the DHCP. Which means that if I have any sort of device downstream, they will, once connected, travel through the switch and um, ask for an IP from the edge. In this case, the port here will be configured as a switched port. On the other hand, um, I can have a, a layer three switch or a router downstream, uh, and this is the default gateway in, in this case. Um, and what we'll do is that we will configure the port on the edge as routed. Now, we, if we have separate local areas and networks, one here and one here, different subnets, uh, you will need to route between them and uh, you will be able to achieve this um, via static routes or dynamic connectivity. Now you see here that I have introduced uh, also um, some sort of wireless connectivity. There are numerous ways you can do that. You can obviously use a wireless router and connect that with a cable. Um, to a, a one of the one ports. You can use a 4G dongle and in um, the 510 LTE, you can slot the SIM card directly into the edge. The reason I'm mentioning this is um, sometimes um, these connections can be metered. And uh, if you want to be mindful of the cost, uh, just do make sure that this link is set as a backup. So this means that as opposed um, for us to build all the overlays, um, remember that overlays are also built even if you prefer the wired port um, in the business policy. Uh, marking it as a backup uh, will mean that we will only send periodic heartbeats to make sure that the link is still running. And in case this one fails, we will start building the overlays to the gateways and the other sites via the LTE link. Also do make sure that if you are using dongles, you are recommend you are using the ones that are uh, recommended. Can, we can run a site uh, only on LTE, right? So we can um, effectively eliminate any wired ports. Um, so you'll see that in uh, mobile sites, uh, let's take food trucks, for example. You can't really bring a wired cable in there, right? However, be mindful that if the provider is pushing any updates um, to the dongle, uh, that might bring it down uh, and you will find yourself losing connectivity to these sites. My preferred designs are on the right-hand side because as you can imagine, uh, there are a lot of things here that can break. Uh, the edge, the cable, the switch, and because of that, if even one of these elements breaks, um, you will lose the whole site. So going fully redundant allows you to 
still continue running the site even if a cable or a device fails. Now the fully redundant design is here, right? So you, as previously, you can have layer three uh, switches. You can even have layer two. Uh, you might, for example, run um, VRRP or HSRP here just to make sure that the devices will be able to communicate with the default gateway even if the primary fails. And then here you can uh, implement either static or dynamic routing as per the second example. Now in this case, we uh, took each of the circuits and we have split it in two. Always make sure that um, the circuit in itself when split goes to the same port on each of the two edges. So if this is port one, make sure this goes to port one, port two to port two. And we also have introduced the back-to-back -back link that allows the standby to check the primary. And if the primary fails, it will take over the forwarding and unblock the rest of the ports. If you want to find out more about HA, um, I did run a separate video on that. Last but not least, you can also have uh, enhanced HA. Uh, so this is where you cannot split the links. Um, and as discussed in that previous video, you just may want to make sure that the links go in separate ports, right? So do not terminate both of them on number one because then the primary will just think, hey, I have just one uplink. The standby is connected to the same thing, so I will not build an overlay. With enhanced HA, just because we terminate the links on different ports, it will actually allow the active to build an overlay like this, and then another one across the back-to-back -back link and on the second circuit. Now things become interesting when uh, considering hybrid branches in which you use both uh, public and private circuits. Now, although these are not the only two designs available, uh, as you see, there's not much redundancy actually built in this one. There are two deployment modes here, uh, in path. So this is where the edge is presented with both circuits and off path. This is where you maintain uh, your um, traditional router at the branch uh, and you just uh, insert the edge. You'll see here that the edge is connected only to public circuits directly. Now, by default, once you turn a cloud VPN on, you have your hub, you have your spokes. Uh, note on the hub here, uh, you'll see this is the hub. Uh, it is connected to uh, the firewall in the DMZ. So this will be its public WAN. It has a uh, private WAN as well. So this is the connection um, to the MPLS. And it also has uh, the LAN port. Um, this is where it will appear uh, with any uh, LAN routing infrastructure with BGP. Obviously, if you have multiple edges, you can put them in HA or in a cluster. Uh, but if you put them in a cluster, um, that connectivity to this layer three switch or router will make sure that the edges can talk to one another. If I don't want to use any underlay routing, you'll see that each edge will create a tunnel, one on the private, one on the public. So the question is, how would you like to reach any legacy branches? And this is common in scenarios in which you, for example, migrate and you still have sites in which um, the edges are not yet deployed. Now, if you don't do any sort of underlay routing, um, what will happen is that the legacy branch will be uh, learned via the MPLS by your data center that will get redistributed via this BGP connection here. 
and then um, all the branches will have to use the overlays so you'll go here you only learn this via the overlay so you go up to your data center and then from the data center potentially back into the MPLS where you came from just to get to the legacy branch now again this is fine if you design it like this however if you would like the branches to talk to one another directly this is where you can get the edge and you can peer it with the PE router so in this case we can use BGP to now learn routes from the underlay as well so now we know for example that this CE router we don't need to encapsulate anything we can just follow the MPLS route in any case the MPLS route dies we still have the internet route so we'll take the internet bound overlay go back to the DC and from the DC into the legacy branch now for the off path design we have two options one of them is just to use VRRP so in this case we run VRRP with the third party router here this becomes active in case the edge fails uh, then the traffic flows as it would from a legacy branch in this design you'll see that the edge will only establish overlays on the internet port right it doesn't you know it doesn't know uh, it can go out through this side another option is to actually run a, a routing protocol like bgp here so this will actually allow the edge to learn about the rest of the state via the ce router and once that happens uh, it will be able to build overlays over both the public and the private link Now, when I said that a uh, hybrid approach is a bit more challenging, it is because as opposed to a traditional MPLS design where every branch just advertises its own lands and, you know, that's the ultimate destination for everybody else to reach the local area. In SD1, um, there is always an um, redistribution happening between the underlay and the overlay. So what tends to happen if you're not careful is that this branch here, for example, can learn this prefix via the underlay, redistributed in the same way that it will redistribute uh, its own local area networks. And guess what? Everybody else will say, oh, if I want to reach my legacy site, well, I can also reach it via this branch here. So the idea is simple. If you are doing any sort of underlay routing do not let your branch become a transit site and in order to do that in a easy fashion uh, there are two main methods we will be using first of all for in-path designs here we will use a feature that's called um, the uplink flag and we will mark on the edge this neighbor here that we do the BGP peering with as an uplink neighbor. So this means that no matter how many prefixes the edge learns via BGP from the MPLS, it will not redistribute it in the overlay. So everybody else that's connected with the overlay links uh, will not notice that the edge here is connected via the underlay. Now this uplink flag feature is useful and we will um, assign it to the BGP peering here. This means that any routes that are advertised from the neighbor will still make it to the routing table so we can still route locally via the underlay. However, we will not redistribute this in the overlay. This works uh, in the in-path scenario because there is a clear way to differentiate between our LAN prefixes, which we want to advertise, and the WAN underlay prefixes, which we don't. But in case of an off-path design, you will see here we have 
a separate peering with the layer three switch or the router at the site. And then we have another router leaving in the, leading to the MPLS. Now the edge here has no clue when it gets routes from downstream if they are either the LAN routes, so they have to be advertised, or they are the MPLS routes. So in this case, we use a community. And once we uh, set that up, we just need to make sure that uh, this router here is set to advertise all the underlay routes with the same ID. So this helps the edge to differentiate between the local routes and the routes that are learned via the MPLS. So just to clarify, if you want to keep your life simple, do not allow routing to the underlay. Just use the overlays to go back to the DC and then from there use the existing routing infrastructure to go reach the legacy sites. If, however, you want to use the underlay as a primary way to connect to the legacy sites and uh, the overlay to the hub as a backup, do make sure that you don't get in trouble and make your branches a transit size by using either uplink flags in case you have a direct peering with the MPLS or with uh, the use of community in case uh, you already have other routers present. Just before I wrap up, I wanted to uh, show you a bit of uh, design for the data center. And I do apologize, it's really messy. Uh, I try to use different colors so it's, uh, it becomes a bit more clear. Uh, but if you take the blue part here, it, this is what we used to have. We have our core switches here. Um, we used to have our CEs. And we only dealt with the MPLS. I mean, obviously, you might be connected to the internet directly in the firewall here, but I just avoided that so uh, not to create extra confusion. Now, we're introducing some edges as hubs. In our case, there's no back to back link. I uh, deploy them in a cluster, which is the more scalable way. But obviously, uh, nothing is stopping you to deploy them in HA. And once we do that, we connect the public ones to the DMZ of the firewall remember that because branches reach out over the internet to each of these edges they will need to have unique ip addresses and they want one nat here and also do make sure that you allow uh, certain ports uh, out on the firewall So most of these ports are outbound, the TCP443, DNS, and NTP. Uh, but for uh, UDP2426, you need to allow inbound and outbound. Again, this happens on the internet firewall here. Now we have other ports leading to uh, our MPLS routers. And we have our LAN ports here. Now, in case the CE routers don't have uh, ports available, uh, you can obviously skip the direct connections and use the core switches as long as the edges have access to both the public and the private circuits.